All right there. Hello, everybody. It looks like we have a, a large group waiting to get in. Um, if you're new, I'm Scott. I'm with Artist Network, and we do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We draw together. Uh, so this is what we're working on today. Um, and we've got the, these eggshells, the egg. Um, the focus this week has really been on working um, on texture. So we've done hair, we've done fur, and now we're kind of shifting gears into something that has a very different texture. Um, and I'm also shifting uh, medium here. So you can see here I'm working in graphite. Um, I've got uh, this ebony pencil that I'll be working with. Um, if you don't have an ebony pencil, if you happen to have a soft uh, graphite pencil, something like a 4B, 6B, 8B uh, pencil, those will all work. Um, a 2B, um, I think will work also fine. It may not get quite as dark, but I think you're gonna hopefully um, kind of learn some techniques that you can apply to that. Charcoal will also work, because what I wanna do today is kind of show how I apply um, a, a similar process to working with charcoal uh, when working with graphite. Uh, so I've talked a bit about that and I think I've, I've tried to describe it, but I really wanna kind of show that off um, in this drawing. So um, if you, uh, if you're looking for the reference image, it's into the description there. Um, again, if you're new, um, you can find additional resources at artistnetwork.com. There's the drawing together page. You can link to it right off of the home page there. Um, we have individual show pages built out on that site as well, where you can share your work um, and comment on it. Um, and I also really enjoy it when people comment in the chat field. So we have the live chat going on. Um, and if you're watching this as a recording, I'd love to hear your comments in the chat below. Um, share your ideas of things that uh, you'd like me to draw. I, I got a lot of really good suggestions in the last video. And so feel free to add some additional ideas in the chat field. But if you do that, just do that to the recorded version of this pro program. It's easier for me to track that and I can impl implement those ideas. So again, we're, this is the direction we're going in. I kind of I took a, a stab at drawing this the first time to kind of wrap my head around the process and what I want to do and how I want to describe it. And now I want to walk you through what I did to create this. Uh, so um, you can see here in the ebony pencil, I have it sharpened on both ends. I like having a really sharp point on one end that I can use for detail when I need it. And this is what I've talked about in a few videos before where I've, I've taken a razor blade and I've carved away the wood casing around the lead to kind of expose the core of the lead a bit more, um, or graphite more specifically. Um, and, and then I've also kind of filed it down on its side a little bit. Um, and, and actually a lot of that happened while doing that first version. Um, because what I, what I did in that, that first version was I built up a, a layer of graphite um, just by using this technique. So by utilizing and engaging the side of the pencil, it creates a softer, a smoother, and more consistent um, tone of graphite on that page. Uh, and what you may have seen me do in previous um, drawings, especially when working with the charcoal, is working with um, vine charcoal to, to get rid of the white of the page first. Um, and that's really the same type of thinking here in this drawing is I just want to get rid of that white and I can erase out the highlights later but right now I know that uh, the white of the page is going to interrupt my ability to really interpret value here. So it's all very light at this point and we're just going to continually build that up. The other thing that I want to focus on in this process is uh, building in terms of value and shape and gradually refining those forms rather than going right to a line, line work and kind of outlining the forms first. Uh, so as I'm starting to kind of just coat this, I'm also kind of rolling the pencil in my fingers. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm constantly turning this around so I'm finding a new edge to the, that graphite core. So just moving this in all different directions to get rid of that white. And what you'll have seen me do with the vine charcoal as well is kind of smooth it out with the palm of my hand, which I'll be doing as well. Uh, so if you're following along um, and you, if you have any questions, it's helpful if you call them out in all caps so I'll see them. We get a lot of, um, get a lot of comments coming through and it's hard to sort through them. But if you have something that, uh, in particular that you'd like to ask, uh, I'm gonna do my best to monitor the thread while we go um, and like I said, it's helpful if it's uh, typed in all caps so I'll see that. And, and commenting during the live session too is really um, really helpful, I think, for people. If you're, if you're watching this as a recording, um, it's helpful to follow that live chat. Um, and you might find some really helpful um, kind of hints there. 
So just using the, the side of my hand, kind of smooth this down. I'm going to continue to build up layers. And I want to keep my eyes kind of soft and atmospheric at this time. I'm not uh, focusing. I'm doing a lot of squinting. And I'm looking at the, the, the overall shapes of value. I'm really not even thinking about the, uh, the objects themselves. I'm not thinking about shells. I'm not thinking about egg yolk or white. I'm just kind of reacting to values and in general placing of them. And so hopefully what you're going to see throughout this process is, is, is the, uh, the objects emerging kind of like ghosts on the page here. And, and I wanted to use graphite because this is, again, this is a, a um, what, I, what I've heard from a lot of you in the previous uh, drawings is that you know it's it's hard to necessarily see how some of the charcoal techniques apply to graphite and that's my intent with with this video here there's lots of different ways you can draw and you want to find what works for you um, and I don't often you know I don't always draw this way when I'm working with graphite um, so this this is kind of the, the, the challenge of this one of the things I like about the ebony pencil is just how soft and dark it can get And I've got, the, uh, I've got a, the, the screen in front of me that I'm looking at that I can see from the camera's perspective, um, you know, how this drawing is coming together. And I'm going to be referring to that. And that helps me to simulate what would happen um, if I wasn't filming it, if I was working vertically, and if I could step back from the, uh, step back from the drawing a bit. So I'm just trying to think about general value, and you're going to see how these forms um, sharpen up throughout the drawing process. I know with many of you, you may have uh, have spent some time on Zoom or some other video chatting, um, uh, you know, uh, tools, some technology there. And you may have experienced, you know, people's cameras being really kind of foggy or kind of blasted by light or this, maybe the lens isn't clean um, on the camera. Um, and you get like these really soft kind of uh, videos. And that's the kind of what, I, what I, I kind of think about when I'm doing this is like a, if I almost imagine everything is there right now and I'm just gradually pulling it into focus. So that's where my head's at right now. Um, uh, for the ebony pencil, Dennis, you have a question about brand. Um, I've been using this Prismacolor, and, and I think it works out really well. Um, I, I don't know as if I've really spent enough time um, between you know, the brands to know, to know the difference and say that I'd recommend this over something else, other than I, I just, I'm just finding that this is working out really well for me. Um, just, I want to look through, because I see a bunch of comments coming through, looking to see if there's any, uh, any additional questions before we get going here. Uh, Prania is asking, why am I making lines in different directions? So that helps to actually create a smoother tone of value over time. So that is what we would refer to as cross hatching. So hatching would be, um, the idea of building up values using marks that all run in one direction, then cross hatching is just you know sim simply um, overlapping marks that run in different directions. And over time, you're going to see that it's going to lead to a, a smoother and more consistent gradation of value, especially with the technique that I'm using. You can see how I'm holding it really far back, and I'm I'm, I'm able to um, kind of engage the, the side of the pencil so I cover a larger area than if I were to uh, simply use the, the point of the pencil. So, so I'm not really thinking about proportions at this point. I'm just trying to look for general shapes of light and dark. But I am starting to see the, the forms emerging on the page, and I can start to simulate and kind of indicate the, um, the shape of uh, some of these shells here. Um, and 
I'm key, again, I'm still using the side of the pencil because I want these lines to be really soft. If I switch to this tripod grip and I point that that tip down, it's going to emboss on the page and it's going to be much harder to erase that line later. So uh, using the side of it right now is really helpful. And then it, it being able to kind of lift and kind of rock that point allows me to kind of quickly get into a, a finer line if I need it um, and then drop it back down to a, a smoother and more broad um, area of value. All right, just looking, looking through here. Oh, this uh, paper, Cynthia, yes, this paper that I'm using is, it's not toned, but it is kind of a cream paper. So that I'm using this, this Canson um, 11 by 14 classic cream, and it seems to be working well. Um, it's, you know, it's, it is very white. It's just kind of slightly warm. Um, but, you know, so it's not really kind of a noticeably cream kind of tone to it. Uh, you tried to, so, and then you're saying that you tried to buy some other store. They had only a gray and tan. Um, yeah, I think that the tan is what I used in the last one. Um, and it seemed to, to work out all right. Kelly from Maine. That's my home state. Much of my family is back there still and miss it dearly. Hopefully you guys aren't getting hit by the, that winter storm that seems to be coming up. Uh, shaving a block of graphite to make powder. Karen, uh, you have a, a good question there, or a comment about shaving the graphite to make powder. And I actually thought about doing that for this. Um, and I wish I had a better reason why I didn't. Um, it's just not something that I've done a whole lot with, but it's actually really helpful. So if you get to this um, stage where you've kind of cut, shaved away the, the pencil casing and you've exposed that core, you can use uh, just sandpaper, just kind of file it off in the sandpaper. It creates a fine graphite dust that really is a nice, um, a nice material to kind of move around on the page. That's a great suggestion. Uh, and now, and you may be thinking at this point too, you know, I've got these fine highlights, and I've got these fine edges around the eggshells that are gonna show up in here. Um, I'm not worried about that uh, at this point. Uh, it can be a bit cumbersome to try to indicate where those are gonna be and then preserve that throughout the drawing. And so I am just, I'm not even gonna worry about that. I'm gonna show you my technique for um, creating those fine points later on. I do have a, um, I do have this chalk pencil that I experimented with with a graphite yesterday, and it worked out okay, but it blends so much with the graphite that it um, uh, that I, that I'm not not sure if I'm going to actually be utilizing it in this. It, it didn't quite give me the the intensity that I was hoping for. Uh, so one of the things we've also talked about in this series is the concept of um, the three different types of shadows that you want to be looking for. Not necessarily types of shadows, but the three terms that you want to be aware of. There's the form shadow, which is the shadow that like on the form of the object. So we can see in this egg, for example, part a portion of this is in shadow. We see some shadow up here. That's the form shadow. That also casts a shadow. So that's the second type of shadow, which is the um, the, the, the shape that's being cast onto the surface by the object. Um, and then there's the shadow shape. There's a combination of those two. And I'm thinking more about the shadow shape at this point. I'm not differentiating between cast shadow and form shadow at this stage um, because I want them to unify. Um, what can happen sometimes is, you know, drawing, say if I were to draw this egg and leave everything else white or blank, then I go in there and add the cast shadow. There's a, uh, there's a uh, potential that it could become kind of disjointed and I want everything to feel unified. I want to feel like everything is being cast in the same light and in that same space. So that's what, what I'm thinking about in here. You can see here we have a, there's, this is the inside of this second shadow, uh, the se second eggshell, there's a shadow inside there. And then we have light down in here on the, the eggshell where the light's hitting that. And then we have light above where the light's catching the inside of that shell. Then it gets darker up in here um, in that background. And so I'm looking for that alternating sequence of light and dark value relationships. 
smoothing this out again. Um, and, and you may be, um, uh, you, you may be, it may be kind of different for you to work with graphite in this way because the kind of the intuitive method for working with graphite is to start by creating a distinct outline and then filling it in. Um, and what I've found in working with graphite is that it, it just takes too long for me. <laughs> and it might be that I'm just uh, kind of impatient uh, and I like to get marks on the page quickly. Um, I like to, to work through the drawing more quickly and um, I get kind of claustrophobic when I get caught up in details and like the slow, precise method. Uh, for any of you who've, who work in, in um, colored pencil, um, that that medium kind of lends itself to that way of working. And when I see these great colored pencil artists working um, and it's so meticulous and uh, and it requires so much con concentration and it becomes kind of a meditation in a way. There's so much that I admire about that and especially the end result. Then I get in there and I, I, I just get anxious. I get claustrophobic. So I like to move things along quickly. Um, and so that's why I'm working in this method here. Um, and, and hopefully it, it you know, if you, if you haven't worked this way, hopefully it becomes something for you to consider. But as with anything that I present in this series, um, you know, find what works for you. This is, these are just exercises that I'm doing to try to strengthen my abilities in drawing because it's something I neglect too much. Um, I'm trying to vary the forms, subjects that I'm working with so, uh, you know, I can learn from each of them and then I'm going to find a way to, you know, apply it to my painting as well. So as you can see now, I'm starting to think through some of these general forms, but I'm still utilizing the side of the pencil because I don't want these to be hard lines. It's an interesting glow in the egg whites where it's a little bit lighter here. The light catches on a rim over here. And I need to continually check the, um, the perspective. So looking at the screen in front of me, I want to um, I want to check that because from this angle here, I'm I'm naturally kind of adjusting in my brain the perspective of the objects, um, and so I want to make sure that I'm uh, keeping everything correct. So looking at it vertically is really helpful. Uh, stepping back um, while you're working is a really important tool. So here I'm noticing some of these lines becoming distinct, so I'm trying to switch my technique up to become more uh, circular. And what I'm noticing is I, I kind of had stopped rotating the pencil, um, and then I rotated it again and I got these kind of flat spots on the edge, and that starts to create um, more distinct lines on the page. And so I need to remind myself to rotate that pencil. All right. Um, Linda, you just came in. Um, I did not start with a line drawing here. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm glad that you observed that um, coming in um, you know, a little bit farther along in the drawing. And so that's an intentional choice um, to show perhaps a different way of working. And so what I'm doing is I'm building up these, uh, I'm allowing the, the, the subjects, the objects to emerge on the page first by thinking about general value shapes and gradually refining them. So that's what I'm thinking about here and trying to get away from the, the concept of line to define an edge and using instead um, value relationships. So this is, um, if, if I don't know if you're, you're new to the series or not, but um, I've been doing a lot of work in charcoal, so I'm trying to apply those same, that same type of thinking that I use in charcoal drawing to graphite. Um, and then if you are coming in a little bit late and you want to see the entire thing, these all go up as recordings immediately following the event. Um, so you can watch, follow along as you'd like. Um, so now I can, I can see that as the, the 
objects are starting to emerge on the page, I'm starting to think about the spatial relationships between them, some of the measuring tools. So as I'm kind of looking at these dark areas, I'm putting my awareness on other aspects of the drawing. So I've kind of established the yolk of the egg a little bit. I'm not sure if this is correct. It feels too big, but maybe, maybe it's all right. Um, I, could, I think I do need to cut that back down a little bit. Um, but this, this portion over here feels all right. I think I just need to make that yolk a little bit smaller. Um, but I'm, as I'm working on this area, I'm trying to think about it in context of some, some of these other elements that are starting to emerge. So I'm starting to look for um, kind of anchor points for me to, uh, to use to um, do some comparative measuring. I just want to make sure everything is lining up. So that's a big part of the drawing process is kind of splitting your awareness, not getting sucked into any one point um, too quickly. Um, it's all about, at this early stage, thinking about the relationships between the objects. And so as I'm doing this, again, I'm engaging the side of the pencil, trying to think through that path of this lower portion of the shell to see if, you know, see if I'm kind of in generally in the right area. Um, try to try to break up round portions as a sequence of shorter, straighter marks. And that can be helpful. But I'm really kind of forcing myself to not use the tip of the pencil because that creates a, a harder, kind of more embossed line on the page that's more difficult to erase and it becomes too fixed. Um, everything needs to be fluid and, and moving in the, in the drawing. You know, just as I was observing with this, with the, with the egg yolk down in here, uh, I think I drew it a little bit too big, but uh, I kind of, I'm kind of holding that in my mind, but I want to also get some additional information going here, looking for some dark areas underneath this eggshell and understanding what those forms are like. So I've got, uh, in front of me, I've got my drawing and I have the reference image. I also have the reference image printed out here. And so I'm kind of switching back and forth between uh, looking at both of those as, um, as references. And keeping these marks really light and loose. And this, this process really is a lot about trust uh, because there's there's an instinct to want to get in there and start to render all of these details and get right to understanding the objects. Um, what I'm thinking about right now though is really establishing a foundation um, that's built on value and light. Um, and it's almost like I'm just trying to think about drawing shapes of light and shadow, not objects. Uh, because once I start thinking, you know, this is an eggshell, uh, that's an egg yolk, egg white, etc my kind of preconceived notions about what that is and how it should look start to kick in and I stop looking specifically. Um, you know, it's really most beneficial to be working from life uh, if you have that opportunity. Um, so I would recommend that, you know, it doesn't really work in the context of this live drawing for me to have the, the live setup. I just, I, I would need an extra camera getting it right from my viewpoint in order to do it drawing from life. So I'm, I'm working from a photograph, but if you ever get a chance to work directly from life, that is going to be ultimately the best teacher for you. So I highly encourage that. So, all right. Feeling like the, the general proportions are starting to form here. And there needs to be a bit more darkness in here. Uh, Pranya, you're asking about the grain of the paper. Does it work well with this drawing? Uh, that is something, it's, it's really interesting that you just posted that because I was just running through my mind um, as I'm building up this value here, I was confronting that grain, that kind of that, that the tooth of the paper um, is becoming noticeable. Um, and at this stage, I'm not too worried about it, but I am going to be using my shading stump and that's going to, uh, that's going to influence the, the grain of the paper um, significantly. So I'm going to get into that because I, that, that does play a role, especially in terms of texture. There may be times when you want to use that, 
the tooth of the paper to your advantage to simulate texture, um, and there may be times when you don't. And now in this case, there's so much kind of smooth, kind of a glassy quality to all of these objects that I want to actually ultimately get rid of that tooth, but I don't want to get into that too early. I'm still just laying down, um, laying down some graphite but the ultimate value is kind of being thrown off because of the tooth of the paper. There's some optical mixing. Some of that white of the paper is still showing through, um, and um, and it, it's making that, that value feel lighter than um, given the amount of graphite. So I'll show you in a bit as I start to bring in my, um, my shading stump. All right, so I'm just trying to look for these major kind of masses doing some angle sighting. So if I anchor the left side of this, the, the eggshell on the left here, if I anchor that right there, I can look at the angle running down between, between this portion of the eggshell and this portion of the egg yolk. And kind of, I, I feel like that's pretty consistent. Um, and then if I, if I anchor the right side, the, the, the far point of the eggshell over here, it's kind of across and a little bit higher, up, a little bit up here. Um, then I can do the same with this this side of the egg yolk, and I want to see how that works. So it's, if I drop drop a plumb line down here, I can see that this point intersects right about here, and there's a, a distinct angle between those two. And so that puts the edge of the yolk kind of somewhere up in here, and there's a bit of an axis. So that, that's what I was doing here is trying to envision there's kind of an axis running through here. You know, it's not perfectly horizontal, it's kind of a tilted oval because of the volume of that, that egg yolk. All right, so now, you know, now that I've got some kind of basic forms in here, I can start to become a bit more specific. I can look here at the, the negative space between this shell and this shell. Start to adjust some of the values accordingly. I just need to shift this over. So I'm trying to do actually do some negative drawing. What I'm looking at is this shape between the, the egg white and the yolk there. And then and trust that that's going to ultimately help me to see the shape of the egg shell. Um, now, now a key, another key point is this point right here, carrying this across to see at what point along the along the the uh, the, the, the this left egg shell. Where does that point line? I think that's somewhere right around there. All right, can indicate the low point here, now the high point. And that what I can do is do some, com some comparative measuring. I can compare the width of that egg shell. So I'm lining this point here with the left point. My thumb is blocking off the, the right side. I compare that to the height and you can see it's a little bit shorter than it is wide. So if I've already blocked in that width, then yeah, actually I've, I've got a pretty good, a pretty well established kind of dimension to the egg. So now I've indicated the low point, the high point, left side, right side. And I can do that over here, just these soft marks. Across here. Doing a lot of just looking back and forth between the objects. Thinking about that shadow shape as well. You can really build up some value in here. So hopefully this is kind of, you're able to see these forms starting to emerge on the page. And this, this process may not work for you, but this is kind of what 
this whole drawing series is about is just trying out new things, see what works, what doesn't work. I think I wanted next week I want to do a, a drawing that's really all about line um, and give that a shot. I've been doing so much value work and looking at light and shadow, which I think helps to create a nicely unified and rendered form. But I also think there's value in, in kind of challenging in other areas as well. All right, just checking the chat here. Um, Rob CP is asking, how are you able to judge values working from a color reference? Is it just practice? It, it is. It is practice. Um, and now, in this case, though, you know, graphite does have a limited range in value when we compare it to charcoal. You know, charcoal can get so much darker. You know, I'm not in this dark here area under the shadow. I'm not going to be able to get as dark as this. Um, and this gets dark up here as well. It gets dark under here. Um, what I'm, what's most critical is understanding the value relationships. So when we look here, for example, this part here is a little bit darker than this. And then we transition up here, and now this becomes lighter, but it's not as light as that rim of light along the edge. And so that's what I'm looking for. So then we have light against darker over here. We come down here, it gets a little bit lighter, and then darker again, and I have to evaluate, is this area darker than this? It gets darker over here than over here. And so there's this constant change in values that we're looking for. And if you start with that fundamental question, is it lighter than or darker than than the neighboring value? Then you go from there and you, and you start to refine it from there. How much darker, how much lighter? Judgment until you actually get marks on the page. Um, and so the, and, and sometimes it gets really subtle. It's hard to tell, you know, if something is lighter or darker, especially when we are working in, in kind of brighter colors or if you have complementary colors, you're going to have a red and a green next to each other that are exactly the same uh, value. So when drawing in black and white, the, they may just blend together, but in real life, they have a high val uh, color contrast, so they become highly visible. Um, and so sometimes it's, when confronted with something like that, it is ultimately becomes an intuition about what you need to do to indicate that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, it's good to hear that everybody seems to be doing all right here. All right, so I think now I can start to get in and become a bit more specific. I've got enough information on the page that I can I can really start to now refine. Um, I love what's happening to my hand here, <laughs> how metallic it's getting. Um, and now I'm just, I'm using the, the palm because it's less oily than my fingertips, which can sometimes cause issues. Like I'm seeing some spottiness up here um, that would be caused from, you know, when I put the paper down, I was using my fingers um, and that those oils are interrupting the, the surface here. But I'm just trying to smooth this out. Now I have my shading stump and now watch what happens to the value. You know, as it starts to fill in the, um, the, the, the grain of the paper a bit, it changes that value. It's actually making it look darker. Um, and so I wanna be really careful here too. So now this, uh, when I'm working with the shading stump, I'm trying to think of it just like I do any other drawing tool. I'm making a mark. So it's not just about smoothing out an area. It's about refining shapes. Um, and so now I can start to refine some of these edges here. And I really want to pay attention to um, the, the transition of light and dark, especially around this bottom portion of the eggshell. There's kind of a lost and found edge in this area where it's hard to tell um, if, you know, which is lighter and which is darker. That mark became a little, little dominant, but that's all right. Again, I'm not worried about the highlights in this area. I'm trying to keep my, my marks moving in a lot of different directions. And I'm trying not to think about it in terms of line. And just like I did with the, the graphite pencil, I'm use, engaging the side of the, the shading stump as well. It gives me a more broad area um, to kind of smooth this out. Now 
as I come up here, I can start to refine the shape of the eggshell. But I'm trying not to think about it in terms of line. I'm trying to think of that path. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work up to that edge. This is really going to be awesome right along here, that thin strip of light along that eggshell. And uh, I want to work my way into finding that. I'm going to show you what I mean by that in just a, just a second here. Kind of smooth that out. So this is where the grain of the paper um, becomes something that you need to be aware of and see is it serving the texture or not. Uh, and maybe we can use, utilize that, allow the grain to show in some areas but not in others. So maybe smooth this out in, in the interior of the egg um, and allow some more of the tooth of the paper to show on the, out, the exterior to kind of show that contrast. So I'm not worried about, I'm not, or I'm not thinking about getting the values correct at this stage. I'm thinking about the shapes and, and trying to indicate the value relationships. So I can go in and make some areas darker, some areas lighter, but I want to start to think um, about those value relationships as much as possible now. Hopefully the, hopefully the form is starting to emerge more clearly on the page. Uh, Victoria, you printed out in black and white, perfect. Yeah, it's interesting. I'd be, I'd be curious to see how that, that printout uh, differs. Um, you know, I notice even in my, the, the printout that I have here, it really doesn't quite have the luminosity as the digital image. And I, and I know that artists are spending more time now working uh, from digital images, working from screens in their references rather than printouts. Um, for that reason, it, it more closely um, kind of replicates the natural environment. And in some of the areas of prints, just the, the, the color gets killed or the highlights uh, kind of flatten out or something. But um, I think it's helpful to have multiple references. I've been finding that actually having the printout um, and the screen to work together from can be helpful. It's a bit easier for me to, to utilize the print for um, proportions and then use the screen for interpreting value. So this is all about keeping it kind of soft and light, just kind of refining some of those forms again. You know, there's a lot of kind of subtlety and there's kind of these really subtle reflections in here that we're gonna deal with later, but I wanna make sure the general forms are correct. It's just kind of an interesting kind of shadow here that the yolk is casting onto the white. Again, softening it up. Maybe use that, uh, that, that uh, kind of soft light that we're creating to our advantage to kind of push the depth in this in this drawing. All right. Yeah, uh, Shema, yeah, the egg yolk should be smaller. I, I completely agree with you. Um, it feels too big right now. And so I've kind of, I've got kind of some indicated marks here that I need to work on, but I can adjust that um, by, by looking at the shapes of the values around it. So I'm not worried about correcting it at this point, but I am holding that in my mind that I know I need to at some point kind of correct the, the scale of the yolk. Um, but you know, so I see this area here um, will ultimately just become part of the dark part of the egg white. And then I'm gonna bring that darker edge around the yolk in a little bit as they go through. So um, I'm glad you kind of you kind of called that out. And anybody too, if you're if you're feeling or you're seeing anything that needs to be kind of corrected, um, feel free to shout that out. It's not um, it's not a problem at all. I enjoy seeing the observations that you all have. It's helped tremendously. 
and I think it helps uh, you as well if you're not drawing along um, to to really uh, kind of engage with the with the drawing and take away something from it. All right, so here's what I think I want to do now. I'm going to use this this eraser here. This is my rubber eraser, and you can see that I've shaved it down to this fine kind of edge, and that's going to help me to pull out some of these uh, finer edges. But I know that what I'm going to ultimately be doing is creating something that's a little bit too heavy. And I'm kind of thinking carefully as I go through, trying to get the, the general shape in there. And, you know, I need to ask myself, how critical is it that I get the proportions exactly right? Um, as long as I'm in the ballpark, I'm going to be happy here. Um, you know, mostly for the, the sake of time and kind of moving through the drawing. Um, I want to help you all kind of see that the general process. So I may be off in a few areas. So what I'm doing is I'm overstating that highlight. It's too big right now, and I know that's going to happen. Um, and now I'm going to come back in and refine it. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to lift off some of this area here. That, that highlight gets kind of lost as the light on the interior side of the shell kind of comes in. So I what I love about the kneaded eraser is that the ability to create kind of a softer transition. So again, just using pressure, um, like I do when I'm manipulating the pencil, is I can create kind of some sm smooth transitions here. All right, so now, now what I can do is I can work my way into to refine the shape, and I'm going to kind of work from left to right. Um, and so I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm just using the shading stump to um, kind, of, kind of cut into that highlight and refine that edge down. Um, and hopefully it's, it's not too heavy of a line. I want to be really careful with that. So um, I'm kind of using this to indicate that edge and then blending it outward. And that's gonna create a, a kind of a harder edge, but I don't want it to read like a line because the line will ultimately kind of pull us out of the realism. So I'm kind of, again, I'm, I'm kind of working my way in to find that edge. So I'm doing the outer side of it right now. I'm kind of refining it. And this is where if I have the overall proportions established, I can be much more precise. I can put all my focus on each individual part and I, I can shed my awareness of um, the other parts of the drawing. And then down in here, this is, I need to get some, a little, a little bit more attention to what's happening down in here because it's, it's hard and the, the, to really understand what the value relationship is. So I was kind of making that mental note. I'm going to come back to that in a bit. And as we come across here, thinking about this general shape, and there's this cool kind of broken edge quality. Um, Motion X, how long have I been drawing for? Um, if, if we're talking about this specific drawing, I've been, I'm about 45 minutes in, um, or I imagine we're about halfway. Um, this one may go a little bit longer, um, but in terms of my, my general practice, um, I've been intentionally practicing drawing for about 25 years. Um, it was... Yeah, it's almost it was 24 years ago that I took my first college drawing course, and then you know I focused on that in high school quite a bit. But I kind of committed to art making about 25 years ago. All 
and then you, you know, focused a lot on drawing at that time. At that time, um, so this is going to be a lot of fun. We have this this shape here, and I'm going to indicate it with my my shading stump, and I can come back in and refine it with my pencil in a little bit. And now what I can do is I can come in, in here and, and I'm working on the interior of the eggshell and I want to try to find that, that thin line right up leading to that, that thin edge of the eggshell. So I'm, gonna, I'm just kind of cutting in with it to try to leave that, that really thin edge. It almost disappears up here. And I'm trying to observe any of the marks that I'm making um, to, to make sure that it's reinforcing the, the depth. You know, so I'm looking at the, the marks in the shading to see how that's impacting the overall uh, dimensionality of the egg. Does it feel like it's got enough space in there? And I'm gonna, we're not done with that edge yet. I'm going to come back in and, and refine that even farther. So now I'm looking at this edge here. Kind of working back and forth between these the, the outer edge and the the inner edge. But hopefully this gives you a sense of the kind of general uh, you know, process for that. Because there's just no way I could have erased out that, that line just perfectly with my eraser. And so I found it easier to, to overstate that highlight and then refine it by moving in against it. So I'm gonna smooth out this transition. It's a little bit strong. Can knock that down and there's a little bit of highlight right in here. Um, and so now if I need even sharper detail, I can utilize my pencil here and I'm going to keep using the, the edge of it. And I want to be really careful not to create too heavy of a line. Uh, I'm just refining that shape. And I'm not worried about mimicking that, that, that precise form. If that's off a little bit, that's all right. But this is going to give me a little bit sharper of an edge, especially right in here, which is a strong focal point. So again, I just want to make sure that as I lay down these marks, it's not reading like a dark line against that edge. I want it to, um, yeah, I want it to feel like a, a value relationship. Now, right now, these two values are very similar to one another, and so I'm going to come back into this and darken it a little bit later. So I'm just kind of making that mental note, and then the back of the eggshell, it gets a little bit darker in here and a little bit lighter right in here. There's some bounce light happening in there. So I can make some subtle shift in value there. And then in here it gets a little bit darker. And I'm, I'm keeping this kind of side grip because I don't, I don't want my mark to be too heavy at this point, so. Really refining that edge down now. All right. All right, so now I think what, I, what I'm noticing is that this needs to be quite a bit darker, and I can refine that shape a little bit more. I love this little, this little notch right in here. Blend out any lines that are emerging so that it reads like a value, not a, not a line. And I can add some 
kind of jaggedy edges to this one. And this is where I can start to differentiate these two. I feel like this, yeah, this needs to go darker, but I also need to know that, you know, it gets really dark underneath there, so. Uh, so hopefully I can get even darker with the with the pencil. Kind of smooth this out a little bit. And I think I might tap this out, maybe exaggerate this a little bit more just to, to keep that that uh, that edge from kind of blending in too much. All right, so now I'm gonna really apply a bit more pressure um, to get some darker, uh, darker value here. And as I follow up, here's a, let me see how this works here. I'm actually gonna kind of cut this out a little bit, exaggerate the value shift by lightening up this area here. I don't want it to be too light, but it might help to highlight that form a little bit. Since it's really in the center of the drawing, it helps to bring that focal point in a little bit. Maybe smooth that out. All right. So now as we work under here, we could see that these there's this little glint of light there in the, underneath that, that that creates that glossy quality. And again, I, I'm, I can't get in there and get exactly the right size little dot. So I'm gonna exaggerate that. I'm gonna erase out this larger area and then cut into that, just like I did with that, that eggshell. So using the shading stump. Kind of refine that. Find that, that darker edge here. And then kind of just work my way into finding these highlights. Okay. Let's take another stab at it. So I'm not really bearing down a whole lot. I'm just kind of refining that shape. And then I'm going to come in and really make that darker value. This is a really thin one. And I'm just going to make this one. I don't know, maybe I'll break that up. So hopefully that's, that's emerging. How's that looking there? Now yeah, you get these thin kind of pinpricks of, of light. They're really kind of exciting. So hopefully that makes sense how I created that. I know my, my head's kind of dropping into the shot there. So hopefully it didn't come in over the area that we're working on. Uh, and then we have a bit of a cast shadow underneath. Um, and then a soft transition into that egg yolk. Let me see what happens if I really smudge this now. Hopefully that darkens it up a little bit more. All right, what do we think? All right. Um, what do you think the main difference is? So Rob CP, what do you think the, is the main difference between or differences that separate the professional from the amateur? Correct values and treatment of edges? I heard it was for oil painting. Those, yeah, those are all, 
those are all factors. Um, the there, there is a confidence um, that comes through with just sheer practice. Um, and, you know, because, you know, for each of those qualities, you're going to find great artists that, that paid no attention to that. Um, but there, there is, I think there is a, a commitment that, um, that professionals ultimately make in their marks that the viewer can perceive. And I, and, I, and I talk about that a lot in this series, that marks are thoughts. Everything that we do on the paper, on the canvas, originates as a thought. Um, and the more clear we are about that thought, um, I believe that it translates into the artwork that we're making. Um, you know, sometimes we come across, you know, just happy accidents. We'll make a mark and we're like, oh my gosh, that looks exactly like a tree. Um, sometimes you don't, um, and sometimes you miss it. Um, but there, there is kind of a, I think there is something that comes across in that. So it's kind of hard to, but those things that you mentioned, edge control, value control, are really, are really kind of crucial elements that, that really help. But specificity is, I think, a, a key thing. So as I work across, you can see that there are these subtle highlights in this area. And I think what I want to do maybe is... Maybe I'll kind of pick up some of that value, but not too much. Pick up, there's a kind of a highlight that comes across in this area. And then I'm going to refine those edges by darkening and doing some negative drawing around the edge. So I'm creating that, that reflected light. Um, in this area along in here. It's not quite precise enough at this point, but let me see. If I use my kneaded eraser, what I love about the kneaded eraser is uh, the ability to shape it however we want. So again, I just like I did with the other highlights, I erased too much, and now I'm cutting back into it, and it's this kind of dance back and forth using the eraser and then the graphite to refine the edge. And then right in here, kind of erased up a little bit too high. Uh, so really it's a lot about practice, and I, you know, I found that um, this whole series, I mean, the, the whole point of the series was, is, you know, to utilize the time that we have now to strengthen our skills, especially if we're indoors. This type of work helps because I'm, I'm I typically am a, a plein air painter. I'm outside a lot. But with that being less available to me, I can utilize this time to improve my drawing. And I realized that it's really something that I, I had neglected. Um, and, you know, a lot of it, it's about building hand-eye coordination interpreting values, practicing your uh, proportions control. Uh, I'm hopefully going to get into doing some uh, perspective drawing as part of this series as well. Um, and so those are all things that, that help when painting on location. It helps me to see. All right, so now I'm gonna do just what I did over here. I'm gonna be doing with this eggshell. Right now it's just kind of a, a you know, atmospheric form. I'm just gonna be thinking through kind of the general shape of the, the highlight areas, overstating it. I kind of missed, I missed that angle there. I don't think that's quite right, but I can correct that. So trying to think before I place these marks, is this the right spot? And then this part in here is going to be really tricky. Actually, let me come up here. I'm going to get this kind of turn and that highlight along that edge. So as I'm using this eraser, I'm trying to place it at the right angle. And it's just this quick vibration to, to pull up that, uh, those marks. 
and there's a highlight right up in right about here and I can erase out you can just kind of press and lift using the vine charcoal to indicate that light on the inside of the shell but again it's not I'm not stating it very very clearly I'm just indicating that basic value relationship and now I can refine the edge it gets a little bit darker in the background and maybe I exaggerate that but I'm going to refine that edge and you can really see that lost and found edge along here um, So uh, kind of back to your, your question, Rob. Well, that's way too high, isn't it? Yeah. Back to your question about what distinguishes a professional from an amateur. Um, I, I think a clarity and vision is something that is that really kind of comes through, um, and that comes through with with practice. You know, you know, a lot of times when I'm working on a painting, I don't really know what I'm what I want. I just I love to make things. There's something that looks pretty that I want to spend more time looking at, and I kind of go for it. Um, but you know, the I think the clearer we are with our intent in a work of art, the, the more that shows through. Um, emotion is a big thing as well. You know, does it um, does it stir emotion? Does it? Um, help does it create emotion in you as the artist does it resonate with the, the viewer um, and then ultimately what is that what is it about I notice you know for me one of the things I really struggled with as a student and I, I still struggle with is the desire to make it about everything you know, think of all of the things in my head that need to go into a drawing or a painting value color texture form light, light shadow um, shape all of that stuff is running through my head and I want that all to be the best um, but sometimes that subject doesn't need that. You know, if you look at somebody like Van Gogh, um, he would sacrifice correct proportion for kind of pure emotional expression in the in the work in the in the marks, um, and that's something that I think people really resonate with as well. You look at Monet, very similar. You know, he would he was looking and looking and looking, but he wasn't looking at everything. He wasn't trying to make it make the, each painting do everything that's possible in art. Um, it's about kind of being clear and committing to one kind of direction and doing that really well. So I'm kind of refining the shape here of this eggshell. My initial stab was making it too large, but so I don't know if that resonates with any, with any of you in terms of what I was saying. Of course, everything that I say, you know, there's going to be somebody else who's going to say that's completely wrong and that's completely valid. Um, and I change directions all the time. But I know for me, I guess the thing that I struggle with the most is not really being clear what the visual hierarchy is. What is most important um, for this work? And, you know, what am I ultimately trying to convey? Um, because sometimes when you try to do too much, then there's like it's like there's too many voices going on, and the viewer ultimately can't figure out what's what, what they're supposed to take away from it what's the intent to take away all right let's see um, Janice is asking a question how do I keep it from smearing well I don't <laughs> You can see that my hand is, is covered with it. And as I'm working down here, it's just building up this haze. I just know that it's kind of part of the process that I'm going to have to correct that and adjust it. So um, I, I just don't personally have the patience to try to uh, prevent things from smearing. Um, so that's, just the, that's ultimately just the way that I uh, uh, learned to work. So I'm just switched over to my really fine point right in here. Um, but so that's um, that's ultimately what I've, I've learned is that I can't prevent it from smearing. So I'm just going to kind of work that into the process. Know that it's ultimately going to be something that I have to kind of clean up later on and deal with. Um, but, you know, there you can use what's called a mall stick, which is basically a stick that you can rest your hand on. 
Um, you can also, you know, use a sheet of wax paper or something underneath your your underneath your hand, so that if you have an area that you don't want to touch, um, that'll protect it. Um, typically, I, I I'm when I'm not doing the live streaming, I like to work vertically. Um, so, you know, then I lose a little bit of control that way, but also my hand is often not on the paper when I work vertically. So, so here I want to kind of darken in some of this area, just these short circular marks. Um, and then refine this edge along in here. So hopefully that answered your question about smudging and smearing. Um, and, and and the thing that you know, kind of going back to intent, the th this the thing about it that I, I recognize for me is that it's ultimately about drawing, not the drawing. It's about the act more than the um, more than the final result. My, my intent right now is to have a good drawing experience, not necessarily come away with a good drawing. Now part of that experience is that pleasure I experience when, I, um, when I've finished something and it looks good, but that's not the entirety of that experience. So it's just something to kind of consider, and I, I tell students this a lot as well, is that sometimes that's the stress and the desire to make the drawing um, you know, great, it makes the act of drawing, the act of creating it, less enjoyable. And I, that brings me sadness to think like that, just because, um, yeah, and, but again, that's just, that's just me. That's my own personal philosophy. Um, you know, and if you're kind of a commercial artist, you don't really have that luxury. You have a, you have a job to do. You got to make something, and you got to do your best. Um, but sometimes you can have a great experience, and the drawing just turns out, you know, poorly. So I'm going to refine this edge just with a really thin line along here. But I want to be really careful with it because I don't want it to to be too strong of an edge. But I just want this to be really sharp along in here to pop this pop this front edge out a bit more. And so in order to add to the realism, I'm trying to break that line up. I don't want it to be a hard and consistent line. I just want it to kind of come through in, in sh little bits and pieces along that edge. And I think we're, yeah, we're only <laughs> over two hours. This I'm over an hour, right? So I think this is gonna run about two hours. Uh, maybe not quite that long, but this is going to be a long one um, compared to some of the other ones that I've done where, you know, it's been closer to an hour and a quarter, hour and a half. I think we're going to be pushing two hours for this. I'm kind of working on this form here, trying to just study the alternating um, shapes of light and dark. Now, I, what I've realized is that I, I really have I've stopped thinking about the proportions here. Um, and, and I think if I wasn't pushing the time for you all, I would go back and revisit the overall proportions, kind of spend some time to double check more. Um, but I'm feeling like this is off a bit, um, and I'm just going to have to live with that, I think. I think it, as long as it's close enough, I'm getting the form right. Maybe pull out, just kind of sharpen the edge just a little bit, a few little ticks along this edge to break it apart from that, that background. So here's where I switch to that tripod grip. It gives me the, 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 the greatest amount of control. Um, but I want to be careful with that. still want it to be about value. And then I think right here I can exaggerate this a little bit. Pull out that highlight right there along that, that tip. Kind of create a bit more depth there. 
And now what I'm what I need to do is come back here. Sometimes when you're working, you may just you need to take a break from that spot, move on to something else, maybe move on to an area that is requires less attention, maybe like a background area where you can just focus on filling it in and smoothing it out. Um, your brain kind of needs a break. Uh, you know, this is very, uh, very much like taking a test in terms of mental focus. Um, and it can be exhausting. And so just kind of be aware of that. We talked a bit about it in the last drawing session. I think it was the last one about building up healthy drawing habits. And one of the things that if you're, if you're really trying to build up a healthy drawing habit, cut yourself off after like 20 minutes, 30 minutes each day intentionally stop yourself from making uh you know from finishing that drawing so that you don't go through this binge and purge cycle where you spend so much time working on a drawing when the next day comes along you're like well i i already used up all my mental energy making that drawing yesterday i don't need to do something today and then the next day comes around and you're like yeah i'm still kind of burnt out from the day before um and uh, next thing you know, six months goes by and you haven't drawn because you're still riding that um, the, the kind of the burnout from that, that drawing session. So if, but if you do, if you kind of intentionally cut yourself off and just say, I'm just going to do 20 minutes today, 20 minutes tomorrow, whether I'm on a roll or not, I'm just, I have to stop. And you spend that whole rest of the day thinking about that drawing and you come back to it the next day with so much more excitement. Um, and now there are these two little pinpoints of light underneath there that, you know, from the, on this digital image, they just kind of disappear into the shadow. I'm going to see if I can do that here. So just a kind of pull out an area, maybe an area here. Again, exaggerated, right? You know, those are way too big. And I can cut back, I can cut that back down. And refine around there. Let's see how that looks. Let's see if that works. Uh, I see a lot of people sharing some good uh, insights about you know, paper and technique, I'm missing some of it. So I don't, I don't, if you have a question for me specifically, let me know, but it, it looks like an exciting conversation going on there. And this gets really dark under here. Got to remember to rotate my pencil because I'm getting flat spots in there. Um, which is all right, but then when I end up rotating it, then that flat spot becomes a ridge. Um, and so I need to keep kind of rotating it. This isn't quite, I think, uh, I think that's all right. I'm just gonna keep that. This needs to be a little bit longer, but I'm not worried about it. I'm not sure making it more precise is going to add to the drawing. And I would like to move this along more quickly. I think actually what I want to do is darken in here a bit more. Especially right in here, because I think that's going to create that, that bowl in under there. And if I bring this dark value right up to the edge, it should really help to pop that, that edge forward a bit. When you're looking at the edges, you want to be thinking about it changing. You know, there should be some change regularly along an edge. And if you're painting, you know, that could be color, it could be texture, value, etc. Um, you know, of course, in this black and white drawing, we really only have value, maybe some line, but I like the way that, that kind of pops that edge out. All right, here we go. We're going to move down into the egg. Now I got to remember, you know, what we talked about earlier about the proportions so I need to kind of double check this as I go along um, down in here there's this kind of light a little bounce light over in this section 
that I can create by darkening the shape, the space around it. And I'm not seeing anything in all caps, so I'm not seeing any, I'm not sure if there's any questions, but I'm trying to focus here now just to, um, just to move this along a little bit more quickly. I am really enjoying this one. You know, I, I don't draw in graphite a whole lot, um, but this, I'm really having a blast in this one. I, typically, I get more kind of enthralled by the value potential in graphite, I mean, in charcoal over graphite. Um, but this is, uh, this is really fun. All right. Kind of refining this down. Kind of, kind of working in from two directions to refine that shape. And I want to be careful about some of those marks reading like lines. So I want to blend out from that edge. That's all right. And then if that's too bright, I can go like this, just smudging right, right over. That form stays, but it gets knocked down. Kind of like that a little bit better, make that a bit more subtle in here. And then there's a bit of a kind of a hook to this light here. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna let this drying kind of run off the bottom. Keep the keep the sharp focus here, let the bottom portion of it become more atmospheric. That'll help to hopefully create a little bit more drama. And kind of vignette it a little bit by darkening. In this corner. And then I'm going to come back up in here, uh, kind of work on that shadow. So just like, um, you know, we were doing with the, the edge of the eggshell, kind of working from the outside in, that's what I'm doing here. I know that the egg yolk needs to be refined. It's there so that I, you know, I don't end up, if I, you know, if I erase it out right now completely and I, and I tried doing it again, there's a, actually a, a better chance that I'm gonna replicate the, the same shape because I have that mu muscle memory built up. So I think it's really helpful if you know you need to correct a form and adjust it, leave the old one on there. Don't erase it down completely um, so that you um, don't end up repeating the same kind of not mistake, but the same placement of that form. I think everything just needs to kind of come up a little bit. Bring this up into the focal, focal point up here. Bring this up here. You want to be careful if you're really observing the bounce light and the, and the shadow side of the egg yolk, not to have it too bright because you see the highlight over in this area is so much brighter. Um, you know, this highlight here is so much brighter than this, and there can be a tendency to over, overstate that. Um, so that's just something that I'm putting kind of in my own mind as I'm, as I'm working here. It's just not overstate those things. Question please, when I ask artist friends for critique, they ask to see the reference photo. Do you think they need it? Um, that is a really good question, Rob. Um, I, my, my instinct is to say no. Um, you know, if, if the objective is the, of the drawing is to make it look exactly like the photo, maybe. Um, but I, I, you know, I think it depends on the feedback you're, you're getting and you're asking for. Um, and now feedback is really, really uh, kind of important um, because you also want to be kind of right-minded about how to how to weigh feedback 
um, from somebody else, you know, a, um, you know, you know, some, some people, you know, their, their feedback can actually ultimately be more harmful because they don't really may not know what to look for. Um, you know, some people are really good at getting honest feedback and, and it becomes about, you know, just what are you seeing here? Um, you know, tell me what you're observing and I'll decide for myself, is that what I want? Um, you know, if, you know, if some people, they don't, they can't articulate that and they'll make statements like, oh, that's great. Or that's not, you know, when that's not really helpful, what's most helpful is when somebody can say, this is what I'm seeing. And, and then you as the artist can say, yeah, that's what I'm going for. Or that's not. Um, and if they can articulate why, you know, that's great. But most people don't have that training. Um, and it's even, even artists, you know, when we've spent that time, um, you know, practicing and, you know, it can still be really challenging to identify what's wrong. I mean, that's why you're going to, you're, you're putting your stuff out there for a critique, right? Is that there's something wrong and you don't quite know what it is and you need somebody's feedback. So identifying what is wrong can be a, a real challenge sometimes. Sometimes we know this doesn't look right, but we don't know why. Um, and if you're, if you haven't spent much time really evaluating art, it's going to be really hard to answer that question. So asking, you know, who you ask for critique is a, I think a big thing. And you want to just be mindful of when, um, what their, their background is and their, their state of mind is when they're giving that feedback. So hopefully that makes sense and is helpful and to some degree. Um, and when you find somebody that gives you the type of feedback that you really need, that's precious. Um, and, and you can kind of work your uh, relationship out with that person. And it may not be another visual artist. And maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a, you know, a musician or a writer or, you know, somebody else kind of engaged in a different type of art form, but somebody can, that can articulate their thoughts and feedback um, uh, clearly and say, this is, this is what I'm responding to. I'm feeling this way, or I, you know, this makes me uncomfortable. And it's, um, it really ultimately becomes about observations, not about evaluating, you know, not about kind of criticizing. Um, and that's, that's again, the, one of the, the challenging things is that we often equate critique with criticism. Um, and, and in criticism as being a bad thing, you're being criticized for making a mistake, for example. And that's not really what's happening in a critique. It's about what do you see? And is that the direction I really want to go in as an artist? And if you don't know, and they don't know, and you can say, hey, well, thank you for your observation. I need to do some more research. I need to be thinking through my drawing a bit more. So hopefully that makes sense. Kind of a long-winded answer there. Uh, Mary Bur uh, Burnham, uh, you can post your work if you go to artistnetwork.com. And you go to, uh, you know, on the home page at the very top, you'll see a, a link to Drawing Together. And on that page, you'll see all of the episodes listed out. You click on any one of those ep episodes, and it's going to take you to the show page for that. And that's where you can post your work. Um, and I'm going to do my best to kind of to monitor that as well as I can. Um, I know many of you have connected with me on Instagram, Facebook, um, and I've been seeing some wonderful work posted there. Um, but I think if, in terms of sharing with the community, that's why we created that resource on Artist Network is to uh, for people to kind of share what you what you've been working on. Uh, okay. Yeah, Wilma, you're talking about artistic license. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's ultimately what it's all about. You know, if and that's where kind of going. You know, back to that question about kind of professional or not professional art. You know, it's about kind of being clear with your vision. You, you see some great artists that, um, you know, made very specific um, uh, pictorial um, decisions in their work. They wanted to, rep uh, to represent space and form in a particular way. Um, and, and I think we ultimately need to have kind of evaluate the work on that. You know, if you look at, like, say, um, kind of traditional, like, Japanese screen prints or Japanese prints, for example, that has a different uh, way of representing depth and space. And so we wouldn't necessarily, 
you know, evaluate it on, you know, certain terms and say, hey, you know, that, that perspective is off. You know, if they're using a particular convention of perspective, there's, an, a, there's a reason for that, and it brings a certain sense of power to it. And sometimes drawing things correctly actually just uh, kind of disrupts the emotional impact of it. Again, going back to the Van Gogh example, you know, these, he did these beautiful drawings of boots, you know, and they look like boots, you know what they are, but it's not a photographic representation, you know, um, and you, I think sometimes you can tell when an artist is, when their, their objective is to display skill, right? And then that, that can be great, right? You know, there's some amazing work that is very skillfully done. But if that's the objective of the work, that's what's going to show through to the viewer, and people will say, "Wow, look at that! Look at the skill that it was required to make that image." Um, and if you, as an artist, um, care less about that, and if you're trying to convey a different message, then you might actually sacrifice skill because you don't want the viewer to be consumed with that. Uh, you don't want that to there to be their first thought. You know, maybe that it's a, a portrait, for example, that. Um, uh, that uh, that it's about the, it's about the the subject, right? And it may not necessarily be about the skill required to make that. You know, you know. Having said that, I mean, there's there is something very powerful about seeing something that's very skillfully made. So I don't want to diminish that. Um, it's just mostly deciding, you know, is that ultimately what you want the viewer to come away with? You know, what do you want that first impression to be? If there even is a viewer, I mean, most of these, I mean, you, you all are seeing this, uh, this artwork come about here, but once this is done, this goes in a, in a filing cabinet, um, you know, in a filing system in my room, you know, this isn't, this isn't, you know, for display, this isn't a gallery piece, a museum piece or anything like that. This is, this is for me, it's about the experience of the drawing. Um, All right, so I think what I want to do, there's this really kind of cool bounce light around here. I'm going to work my way into that highlight. So I want to be mindful. I want to be imagining and kind of envisioning, envisioning the shapes uh, of that reflected light, and I'm going to be doing some negative drawing around them. And then really I want to create some more variety along this edge, kind of sharpen it up along in here, maybe let it stay atmospheric around as we go around here. Don't want it to be a hard edge. So I like that depth. Um, Beggar and uh, one, a drawing without shading is drawing cartoons. That's, yeah, that's, that's a, essentially it. You know, an interesting thing about cartoon, and I, I believe this is. It's correct. I, I haven't been able to really find much information on that, but um, so at the risk of being wrong, what I understand is that in the in the the process of creating fresco paintings, so Michelangelo doing the Sistine Chapel, for example, um, there would have been he would have worked out the drawing in line on paper, um, and then that paper goes, you know, is used to ultimately transfer the line work to the ceiling you know, where then it gets filled in with paint because fresco is about applying pigment into wet plaster. So he's defining these shapes where the plaster needs to be wet um, and, um, and he uses a, a drawing to do that and it's often done in line. And that is what I understand is referred to as a cartoon. The term, the, uh, the name for that would be cartoon and that's where we get, that's where we get that term from is my understanding. But I think, you know, cartoons, you know, um, and working in line, uh, not necessarily a bad thing. The way I view it is that, you know, values, you have values uh, for a reason. If you're going for realism, you want to get rid of the lines because lines don't exist in nature. They're a symbol for an edge. Um, but lines also have a very powerful expressive uh, potential. Um, and... Uh, and that's to also be kind of respected as well. You know, there's so much information that can be conveyed through a line um, that, um, 
and I think that that can you know that can kind of be respected by you know artists and this one is not about that. This is about value relationships. So now I'm going to use that same kind of technique. I'm going to overstate the highlights. And I'm going to race out that, that big area here. I'm going to work my way into it. And then looking at that shape, that shape really indicates the volume of the, uh, yeah, the volume of the, uh, the egg yolk here. There's kind of a curvilinear aspect to it and uh, this way as well as this way. This has been a really interesting discussion today. Kind of gone into some interesting topics. If you are joining kind of for the first time, you know, check out the other drawings in the series. We try to do a different subject each day. You know, I've done a lot of graphite, I mean, a lot of charcoal drawing, a few graphite drawings. This I'm working in graphite. If you are joining new, uh, check out the, the description for the video where you'll find a reference photo that you can work with if you'd like to create your own version if you're following along. So many, um, many of you are following along as, as I go. And it's not necessarily about a, there being a step-by-step -step process, just kind of working through my, my thinking as I go and see if that helps you. If, um, you know, if it just doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, you know, find, find what does. All right, so now I'm using stump. You know, looking at what, this edge along here is really interesting. And I'm just trying to see it as abstract shapes as much as possible. Yeah, I see these marks that are left by this, this kind of technique using the side of the, uh, the shading stump. Oh well. I'm going to see if that hurts the drawing. And I might kind of erase that out or kind of fill in some of the, the light spots around it. Free spirit. What is considered true art? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? Um, I don't know as if I can answer that question. Um, what I keep coming back to, you look at the cave paintings in Lascaux, you know, other areas, other regions, 40,000 years ago. Um, and, and I feel like there's some sort of truth there. What that truth is, I don't know. But I do know that there's a, you know, we, there are essentially two levels at which art exists. You know, I'm doing this for myself, for the benefit of you. If you, if you feel like, you know, you need somebody to draw along and, you, and you'd like some, some of these thoughts, if you find them helpful, that's, you know, the reason I'm doing this. And like I said, then this, this drawing will go away and I'm most likely not going to really do anything with it. It's about the exercise. It's about the process. Um, but then there's art that ultimately represents um, and speaks to the larger culture and larger time that we're in. And that serves a different purpose, is evaluated in different ways. And you can run down this rabbit hole of asking, well, why is this worth so much money? Why is this so important and this other work not? And I can't answer that. But I, in, my, in general, I, I think if anybody is you know, creating value from observing or making art, no matter what that art is, that's a positive. Um, and we just need, we need more of that. 
And I think it's okay to say this, whatever work that I'm looking at is not for me. That's all right. And it may, something may resonate very powerfully with you and not somebody else. And that's all right too. Just gonna smooth this out a little bit. Uh, so now I think I just need to kind of finish refining this a little bit. So hopefully that answered your question or give you something to think about. Um, there's there are some really wonderful books. Uh, you know, for me, what is ultimately most exciting is the the study of neuroaesthetics, the idea that, you know, that, you know, it's the study of how our brains interpret visual images and what happens in there. And that gets really exciting. Um, but if I think too much about what is art, then it's this rabbit hole that I find very difficult to get out of. All right. Yes, Mary, it doesn't have to be sellable to do it yourself. And this is one of the things that I, I find really frustrating in um, uh, when I hear is, you know, when it, there's, there's almost a sense that when somebody picks up a pencil and, and intentionally draws, that for some reason that defines them as an artist. And then the whole world explodes in their mind and they're like, oh my God, I'm not an artist. You know, then, you know, I'm either going to starve for the rest of my life or I'm going to die and everybody's going to make a ton of money off my work. You know, and this whole preconception kind of pulls us out of the value and actually being there. And so um, it, it just, we, we, we've defined what art is and that the idea that if you draw, or if you do something, all of a sudden you're an artist. And, you know, we, we don't do that like if, you know, if somebody goes out dancing, you know, we don't say, all right, well, I, I'm dancing right now. That means I have to be a dancer. You know, like you're dancing in that moment. You're enjoying it. Just enjoy drawing. Um, and, and unfortunately, it can happen at very young ages. And I, I see that changing a lot now is just the idea of for um, younger students to just embrace the idea that they're just making. And just because you're making a painting and you love to paint doesn't necessarily mean you have to um, adhere to all the other aspects of the label that we attach to um, to art and artists. You know, it's very difficult in our culture to um, to present the model of the you know just the just the average person going out there and making art for the fun of it. So that's just my my take on it, but I do see things shifting in general. So, because it can be it can be scary to to identify and say, "Oh my God, I want to be an artist." It was <laughs> I can only imagine what my parents were thinking when I said I needed to go to art school. <laughs> you now being a parent myself, I'm like, "Yeah, I get it. That's a it's a scary field to get into." Um, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I think I'm getting there. I can really be picking away at this forever, but I feel like we've really captured the essence of this. Um, uh, essence of this. So um, I really enjoy all this, the conversation here, the comments that I'm seeing coming through, the questions have been great. Um, I, I love it when people push back on ideas because that helps me to solidify my own thinking. Um, so I love, I love the conversation that's happening here. Um, this video goes up as a recording um, and I'd love to hear um, any suggestions for subjects to draw. If you wanna post that in the, the discussion field for the recording, um, it's harder for me to track that through this discussion field for the um, for the live event. So when the recording goes up shortly, um, if you want to kind of drop your suggestions in there, that would be great. Be sure to like this. Um, that gets, allows more people to see this. Check out artistnetwork.com. If you go to the Drawing Together page, you're going to find more resources for drawing. Um, again, you'll find those, those pages there. And a link, a link to that, those pages where you can share your work will also be going up um, 
in the recording, in the description there, so you'll be able to find it. Uh, we do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, next week, uh, I think I'm doing a horse on Monday, which, you know, I live, in here, I live here in Colorado. There's horses all over the place, and I realize that I, I don't remember ever drawing a horse unless it was, you know, just an element in, in a landscape somewhere. And so, and often it was really understated. And so I'm really excited to, to understand that form a bit. So um, be sure to join me back at that time. It's been a, it's been a tremendous ride getting to know everybody. Um, we're all making friends here. I love seeing the work that you're all doing. So I appreciate it. Art school, uh, free spirits, say art school. I say go for it. Regret every day choosing a real job. Yeah, you know, art school, I, I don't really have any regrets either. Um, but I think, you know, the, the thing that I love about art is that it's one of those, it's one of these disciplines that is with you your whole life. You know, you just, it's all about, you know, continually learning more about the medium, about the subject, and about being an artist. It's never something that you really master and kind of get beyond. You just dig deeper into it as you go. So it's an adventure for sure. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm going to hang out for just a few minutes because there's like a 30 second delay or so. And sometimes some really fun um, kind of questions or comments come in right at the very end. So, but I'm going to sign off now and I will see you all on Monday. Thank you. Uh, Shema Urabi, drawing horses is harder than drawing people. Do you agree? I'll find out on Monday. <laughs> drawing people is hard for me, so uh, I do landscapes most. So I hope they're not harder than drawing people because I'm in a world of hurt then. So, but uh, we'll find out. So thank you all. I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.